We all know the score, TV speakers are pretty average, right? Now that can very quickly be fixed with a decent soundbar, but with so much choice and some really tough competition in the Dolby Atmos soundbar market, which soundbar is the best? Let's find out. Hey guys, Louis from Smart Home Sounds here, and which is the best soundbar is something that we're asked constantly here at SHS. Now look, it's a big purchase and there are some really great options out there. So I can see the dilemma, but the question should really be rephrased to, which is the best soundbar for me? As that's really what you want to know. Now I've narrowed it down to six of the best Dolby Atmos soundbars. It's essentially my soundbar shortlist, having reviewed a lot of models over the years. And my job now is to help you decide which reigns supreme for your space, taking into consideration things like sound performance, additional features, and of course, value for money. Now, if you want to then go more in depth on different soundbars, then I'll make sure I'll link our soundbar review playlist below for you guys. So the first soundbar on my list is this, the Bose Soundbar Ultra. Now this is actually a refreshed version of the very popular Bose 900 soundbar and a new option on the market. So coming in at £899, this Ultra boasts nine speakers, including two upwards firing speakers for the heights, but no sideways firing drivers. Now for me, it does a really great job with Atmos content and in testing, I didn't feel like I missed out on the lack of sideways firing drivers. The soundbar does a really good job of projecting sound around the room, delivering Atmos effects and offers a pretty wide soundstage. Now I think it's a great looking soundbar with a premium finish and it's also nice and slim to sit under your TV neatly. Now the Ultra offers good compatibility with Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi, Air Play 2, Spotify Connect and Chromecast, as well as built-in Alexa, and it also supports works with Google Assistant too. Now the Bose app also offers good adjustments, including center channel and height adjustments, which I know a lot of people will like. Plus, the Bose Adapt IQ tuning process is the best tuning that I've tested on a soundbar. For me, this soundbar wins the title of best vocals out of this lineup, delivering the best vocals that I have ever tested on a soundbar. It uses AI technology to deliver impressive clarity and project spoken words when dialogue mode is toggled on. Now this works really well, particularly for Atmos content, and the soundbar does a really good job of projecting voices without compromising the dynamic range or overall immersion. Now one potential downside to this soundbar to consider is that the rear options are crying out for an upgrade, and I don't feel that their performance really match up to that of the soundbar for a complementary surround sound performance. Now the bass is also lacking at times, so the compatible Bose subwoofer will set you back an extra £799. And finally, it's worth noting that there's no 4K pass through DTS or DTSX on this soundbar. Now next up is the Sony HT-A7000. So as Sony's flagship soundbar, the A7000 is a very popular option and you can see why. Now it is a pretty costly soundbar, £1,299 RRP, but for me, it takes the title of the best all-rounder out of this lineup. The A7000 features a 7.1.2 channel array with two up-firing speakers, two tweeters, five front-facing drivers and a built-in dual subwoofer, all in a pretty robust chassis. Now, it's not the most stylish soundbar, opting instead for a more classic design, but if you want a more versatile soundbar that offers a convincing surround sound experience from a single unit, it's definitely one worth considering. Now, the sound performance is everything that we've grown to expect from Sony. It feels bold and powerful, and rather than excelling in one area, it does everything well. The dialogue is clear, the bass is impressive, and goes a little lower than something like the Sonos Arc, for example, while the surround sound effects are also pretty impressive too. Now, a big plus for me with this soundbar is its versatility. So we've got two HDMI 2.1 ports, USB, Wi-Fi, ALDAC high-res support over Bluetooth, Spotify Connect, AirPlay, Chromecast, and more. Now, you've also got the option of expanding your setup with Sony's selection of rears and subwoofers. Now, there is also an analog output for Sony's acoustic center sync, which lets compatible Bravia TVs become part of your sound by a center channel to create a more immersive and realistic sound performance, especially when it comes to dialogue. Now it is worth knowing that not all Sony TVs support this function, but if your model does, then it makes the most of all of the speakers you have available to you. In terms of downsides to consider, I do think that this soundbar is a fairly expensive option for what it is, and you might find that you could push your budget further elsewhere. But if it's ticking all of your boxes, then the price tag might be worth it for you. 
So soundbar number three comes from Sennheiser with their Ambio Plus soundbar. The not so little brother of the acclaimed Ambio Max takes the same dynamic performance from the flagship soundbar and brings it into a more manageable, stylish and more affordable model. Now that's not to say that this is a cheap option. At £1,299 it still features that Sennheiser premium price tag but it boasts 7.1.4 channels of detailed Dolby Atmos audio to make up for it. Internally there are nine speakers in total, three two inch aluminium full range drivers in the front, another two on each side angled outwards for a wide audio dispersion and then another two upwards facing on the top here to deliver that captivating Atmos experience which let me tell you thanks to Sennheiser's innovative virtualization technology is one of the best out there from a standalone soundbar at this price point for sure. The Ambio Plus has a pretty thorough feature set. Now there's also voice control via Alexa and Google Assistant as well as this nice and easy automatic equalization software that uses the four built-in microphones to enhance your soundbar's performance for your specific listening environment. In terms of connectivity you've got your optical port, Ethernet, HDMI 2.1 eARC port, two HDMI 2.0 inputs, USB and RCA inputs so there's a lot of connectivity options to choose from. Now the fact that there's two HDMI inputs for pass-through is a big plus but it is a little frustrating that neither of these will be capable of supporting 4k 120hz gaming via pass-through. Now you do have Sennheiser's Ambio mode as well which I did find a little hit and miss in testing but it's a good thing to have and play around with nonetheless. So for me this soundbar excels in the level of detail and immersion that it delivers, placing sounds around your space to put you in the centre of the performance. Now I'm going to give it the title of the Audiophiles Atmos Champion, as for me this offers the most precise Atmos effects out of this lineup as well as the most detailed accurate sound performance. But like all of these soundbars, there are a few drawbacks. Now, while there is an option to add an Ambio sub, or two actually, Sennheiser currently don't offer any rears to create a full surround sound setup, but hopefully this is something that they'll bring out in the future. Now, it was also an expensive soundbar, so you'll need to weigh up if the refined performance is worth that extra cost for you. Now, there's absolutely no way that we can mention Sennheiser soundbars without talking about their flagship option, the Ambio Max, which is worth an honourable mention in this video. Now, while it's not the easiest to accommodate due to its powerhouse size, if you have the right space and the budget, then this is one hell of a soundbar, and it takes the Ambio Plus up another level. Released in 2019, it is possible that this could be due for an upgrade, but there is currently a really strong deal on this soundbar, taking it down from £2,199 to £1,799 making this pretty good value for money if you can grab it for that price. Right then, sticking with that premium theme, my next soundbar option is the DVLA Dion. Luxury in design and luxury in price, coming in with an RRP of £1,800. Now this is far from your bog standard soundbar and is a real talking point, and let's face it, a luxury piece of furniture for your room. So designed to be a complete one box solution, the Dion takes the title of best standalone soundbar and boasts an impressive 17 drivers inside here and is capable of delivering 5.1.2 channels of Dolby Atmos surround sound with up to 900 150 watts of amplification and a claimed frequency response of between 24 to 21 kilohertz. But the real star of the show is this rotatable center channel orb here. Designed to be perfect for mounting vertically on a wall or sitting on a TV stand, you can move this orb around to suit your preference. Feature-wise, the Dion is a little lackluster than some of the other options in this list. Now it does offer HDMI eARC and an optical connection as well as your ethernet port alongside support for LPCM, Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby True HD and Dolby Atmos sound formats. Now it also has Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi support including AirPlay and Spotify Connect and you've also got four built-in mics for DVLA's room calibration feature which is available for both iOS and Android. But we've got no voice control with this one, no HDMI pass-throughs and no dedicated custom EQ either. Just a couple of preset modes and a spatial option that uses DVLA space processing to upmix non-Atmos content which credit where credit's due is actually very good at what it does. Despite what the Dion lacks in features, it certainly makes up for when it comes to pure sound performance. This is a proper rock and roll soundbar that's primed for audio file grade listening for both music and movies, and you can really tell. The center channel performance is excellent, and the Atmos effects are up there with the very best that we've tested from a single soundbar. The immersion from this single unit is really impressive, and more than once, it had me questioning whether there were some rears secretly hooked up. Now the depth, details and clarity were good too and the bass performance was clean, tight and impressively weighty and by far the best that we've experienced from a single soundbar. 
Now, when it comes to downsides, as impressed as I am with this single unit performance, it doesn't compete with a soundbar with separate dedicated subwoofer. And of course, with no options for rears, you have no option to upgrade in the future. But imagine having a pair of phantom rears with this. That would be unbelievable. But considering this is DVLA's first foray into the soundbar game, they've definitely given a good enough reason for them to be ones to watch moving forward, if you've got the budget. So option number five is our only complete system in the lineup, and funnily enough, it takes the title of best complete setup for me. The Samsung Q990C is a full package with the soundbar, rears, and sub, which work wirelessly together, and in total, we get 22 speakers and a massive 656 watts of power with this 11.1.4 setup. With an RRP of £1,499, this option pushes ahead with what we could expect from this sort of price point. So for those looking for simplicity, then this is a great shout. So we've got the soundbar itself, which both upwards firing drivers and the rears are also upwards firing surrounds which add to the height channels. Finally we finish the set with an 8 inch subwoofer. So straight out of the box this is a powerful system which offers impressive immersion and certainly fills the space well. Now with a separate subwoofer this setup also performs well with deep bass which further adds to the overall immersion. Now we also have Samsung's adaptive sound mode which identifies object sounds including voices and ensures that they retain clarity at low volumes. We've got support for DTSX, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, Alexa built-in, AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect and more. Plus, if you have a compatible Samsung TV, they have Q-Symphony where your TV and soundbar will work together. In terms of downsides, I think the design is something to consider. This isn't a setup that's going to blend in with your space and the soundbar itself is pretty hefty. So you might want to consider whether aesthetics are an important part of your decision making process. Now there's also no 4K 120 pass through on this soundbar. Of course, this is also one of the more expensive options options out of this lineup. So if you don't think that you'll need a complete setup, then your money might be better spent elsewhere. Our final soundbar in this lineup is the Sonos Arc. Sitting above the multi-award winning compact Sonos Beam Gen 2, the Arc is Sonos's flagship soundbar, which features an 11 driver, five channel phased array and comes with a price tag of 899 pounds. Now there are a few standout features for me with the Arc, but it takes the title of best ecosystem out of this lineup. Now Sonos have a wide range of speakers, which can be added to the Arc to elevate the experience. Now it is also the most comprehensive wireless multi-room solution for those looking to have more of a whole home approach with all of your speakers around your home available to work together. So we've got two subwoofer options, the more compact sub mini and the more powerful sub gen 3 and a range of rear surround sound speakers including the Sonos Era 300s which have upwards firing drivers. Now the Arc is compatible with Wi-Fi, AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect and has built-in voice control with both Alexa and Google Assistant and we also have support for DTS. For me the Arc offers a full rich sound and a wide sound stage to fill your space well. The audio separation and detail are really the standout features of this one and while its vocal clarity, mid-range and higher frequencies are still very impressive, it's hard to argue with the depth and details this soundbar delivers. In terms of downsides, the bass is probably the only area that could do with improvement. It doesn't quite offer the rumble in your chest space that you can expect from some of the other options at this price point, but having the option to add a Sonos Sub Gen 3 or a smaller Sub Mini is the perfect solution to solve that if you've got the budget to do so. Now there's also no support for Bluetooth with the Arc and no 4K pass through or support for DTSX. Now one soundbar that didn't quite make the list was the Nakamichi Dragon. Now we're yet to test that soundbar out but by all accounts it could well make it into our top soundbars if it's as good as reviews suggest. We just need to get our hands on one. Right then, that's six for six, but which is the overall winner? Well, like I said at the start, I don't think there is one winning soundbar for all, but a winning soundbar for you. Now, I know some of you will want a finite answer, so the best I can do is share my winner. So for me, if money was no object, it would be the Dion, as everything about it feels premium, but I'm not at that point right now, so I'm gonna go for the Sonos Arc. Now, I really like the Sonos ecosystem, and I think the Arc offers a great blend of sound performance and flexibility to upgrade in the future if I want to. But the beauty of having so many different soundbars to choose from is that there's something for everyone. So that's what I want to know. Which is the soundbar for you? Do you already have one of these and can you share your feedback with the community? Get in the comments and let us know. Now remember there's a full review of all of these soundbars linked in the description below for you to check out too and if you'd like to see another video like this for some of the more compact options out there then you'll have to let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.